Well, hello everyone. Well, today I've decided to go ahead and change my transmission in my 2003 4.0 Ford Explorer. There it is. It's got 122,000 miles. Motor sounds great. Uh, you start, start it up. You don't hear any timing, chain, cassette noise, nothing. I mean, it sounds beautiful. The only problem is uh, the transmission started acting up. And it's making a grinding noise as I started to drive it, so it's uh, it's got to come out. So uh, now I have not seen any videos on YouTube on how to actually change a transmission. I've seen a lot of them uh, from older models. Let me give you a look back here in the back because I'm talking of it. I've seen videos on how people change the transmissions on different models, but not this particular Ford Explorer with a 4.0. Now I've changed my other Ford Explorer. It has a 4.6 in it. And it was pretty easy. Now this one I was a little worried because it looks like it's, there's a lot of things on it that might be a little bit different. But it turned out it's not really all that different. So um, first thing I did, basically got it up in the air. I got some uh, good ramps. I got uh, some good shocks on the other side of the uh, wheel over here. I don't know if you can see this or not. I'll get down there. I got the back wheel kind of blocked off. <clears throat> and I got some uh, nails holding that in so it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm pretty safe here. Uh, as I crawl up under here, the first thing I did was go ahead and take off the back cross member, which is back, uh, holds the transmission in the back of the transfer case up there. Now it's sitting outside. I did have one problem uh, getting these bolts out on the frame, which all Ford Explorers uh, are notorious about that. Let me get my light. These Ford Explorers do not want to give up the bolts on the frame. I broke three of them, twisted them off. There's one, there's two. And over there, I got one bolt out, but the other one broke in. But the bolts up on the top of the frame, they weren't really all that bad to take out. I just oiled them up and let them sit overnight to the little holes there and basically got them out. Now the frame is uh, a cross member. Let me show you where it's at. It's sitting out here. All the bolts came out except one on the back side. I'm going to have to cut, cut this uh, transmission mount off. And get another one but this particular bolt here sits in there and the whole unit just spins around that bolt there this one came out but for some reason that whole bolt right there just spins around so i'm gonna have to cut this uh mount uh, off and get another one. uh and also but like i said i had to take the exhaust and this bolted together i had to take it out as one piece because i could not get that back bolt out of this mount so uh, if you have this problem, this might be your only solution. Just cut the exhaust and take this out as one unit and worry about that a little bit later. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is take a blade, cut back here, and just cut this off and mount me another transmission mount. So maybe that'll help you out with a little advice there. Now the other issue I had, I got the exhaust off, was which was no problem. I'll walk you through this. I cut the pipe off right there with no problem. Uh, I can get a piece of sleeve and put that back on. Now the bolts on that side of the manifold came off, no problem. I pulled them up, they came right out, and as you can see, if I shine my light up in there, right there, they came out no problem. Now my passenger side, different story, I broke both stud mounts off. So, I got lucky, I got the uh, manifold off. I'll have to crawl it back out, show you what the manifold is. It's back here, and I went to the Ford store, parts place, and I actually got some bolts for it. So I'll show you here in a second as uh, I got company showing up, so I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So uh, I went and got the bolts, the Ford garage. These are the studs that go in the back of this. So I'm going to have to take the, the uh, manifold and stick it up in my uh, press, and uh, I'm going to weld a couple nuts on these uh, broken off studs and heat this spot back part up and try to get these out of there so this is a something i'll have to do a little bit later after i get my transmission out and rebuild it put it back in now, i did get lucky uh, these bolts usually break off in the head because the head's aluminum and these bolts are metal so what i did i heated up the bolts a little bit with a regular propane torch and i put oil on them and i just uh I used, I believe, it was a 13 socket, and I just gently put pressure on it, and uh, just until they kind of broke loose, and I got lucky, and I got them all out, which was uh, very nice because if I'd broken any of those off in the head, 
I would have had some problems. So let me get my light and I'll show you uh, on the top here where the head bolts are. And you can see some are still in the uh, block, which is fine. And some did come out, which is okay with me, which means I can reuse all my bolts. And let me grab one over here. And there's one of them that came out. So like I said, I just used, I believe it's a 13. And I got most of them from up here. I just stuck my hands down in here and I used uh, a small pipe on one of my ratchets and gently just applied pressure and I got them loose. So uh, that worked out pretty good. Now, what I'm up against is uh, the only thing I really need to do now, I still have my rear drive shaft. It is still hooked up. The reason I left it hooked up, see that frame there, part of that brace that's holding up my transfer case and everything. Uh, what I need to do is uh, go ahead and put a jack under here and break those uh, <clears throat> bolts loose. And I'm going to put a little paint there, there, like I did on the front drive shaft, right there. If you can see that, there's some paint on there. Gives me a nice little mark to know where everything goes back. And I painted the drive shaft, front drive shaft too. Um, the way I break these bolts loose, these are 12 millimeter bolts. I usually put a jack under the wheel, lift that wheel up a little bit, and spin it, put it back up in park. And I'll break these loose because you got to have some uh, torque on a good solid wrench. And um, <clears throat> break them loose, and I turn the drive shaft a little bit more, and I do the same thing there. I spin the tire, and that's how that usually comes out. Um, the uh, front of the uh, drive shaft basically uh, didn't have to do too much. It is a uh, little T star sockets. Take those off. And um, <clears throat> these bolts on the uh, back side of the drive shaft, they are, I believe, uh, a little bit smaller than regular sockets. I'm not sure what size they are. But uh, all I got to do now is go ahead and hook some stuff here on the side, which is not too much. And um, I've already broken loose my bell housing bolts, which were pretty easy to come off. The starter was a little bit of a pain in the butt. This V6 40 sits on the driver's side. The starter's already out. Uh, two the, it is held by two bolts. The bottom bolt was pretty hard to get out. It is, is a 13. I had to work it back and forth and I kept spraying oil on it and got it out. The top one wasn't bad. It came right up, but I had to get up on the fender and get down in there and uh, to break it loose. And I had to use an extension. I had to use a deep well 13 to get that out of there. So, if you get past the starter, then you're good to go. All you got to do is get up in here, and here is the bell housing bolts. Let me see if I can get my light here, shine up in there. And I already got one bolt out, and if this thing thing will focus, so you can see the bolt. I painted it, so I know where it goes back in. So one nut is already off. I am going to put a uh, pipe wrench, or well, not a pipe wrench, a uh, an extension up here on the uh, pulley. Turn it just a little bit at a time with one hand and slowly take those bolts out. Now you want to make a mark, paint your uh, nuts so you know where everything goes back. When you put it back together you won't have any issues uh, <clears throat> without any uh, misalignment. That uh, flex plate, the bolts are pretty big so you should be able to get those bolts back in there pretty easy uh, when you put the transmission back in. Like I said, I'm using a transmission jack. It's going to be a lot easier for me, but if you don't have a transmission jack uh, you're going to use something else differently, it may be a little more difficult. So really, the, and the only thing I have to do now, like I said, is um, go ahead and hook those other three bolts in the trans in the uh, flywheel. And my, uh, I did take off some, there's some heat shields that were here. I took those off and they're laying right there. It just makes it a little bit easier to get in here. And I took those uh, um, transmission lines. They're out of the way. And up there's one of my... Uh, O2 sensors, unhook those, and that's about it. So, uh, I will guess I'll go ahead and start taking the rest of this apart. I am going to drop this pan off, drain the oil out of it. I'm going to just drop the pan off at one time and leave the oil in it, put it off to the side. Then I'm going to take my valve body off and my uh, solenoid pack. Just take it out of the way because I'm going to put a pan under here, let a lot of this fluid leak into it. Then when I, when I take the transmission out, I'm going to put the pan back on temporarily to give it something to set on, then I'm going to take this out. I will probably take the transfer case out first. I'll drop it down, take the bolts out, 
and I'll start working on these bell housing bolts. The idea is I'm going to let the back of this transmission and the transfer case, I'm going to let it drop down a little bit so I can get my hand back, back up under here on the back side of the transmission and get these bell housing bolts, which doesn't look like this is going to be too bad to take out. And once I get those out, it should be ready to come back out. So I'll go ahead and finish that up and start on some of this other stuff and I'll be back in a little bit and let you know what I did and what I've done so far. And hopefully if you're doing this kind of a work on this uh, Mountaineer, not Mountaineer, the Ford Explorer 4.6, uh, this will help you out hopefully. So I'll be back here in a little bit. And there is my propane torch that I use to heat up my bolts, nothing fancy. And it really helps out to heat those bolts up and to uh, break them loose. The uh, cross member was a pain, pain in the butt to get out. I had to heat the bolts up. Um, I heated the nuts up, put a little oil on it, then I took a, a 15 on this side and a 18 a wrench, and that's how I got these out. So if you're having a hard time getting these bolts off the cross member, which is, I believe, over here, this thing here, pretty heavy. These bolts hold that in, so if you're going to have a problem getting these out, I almost uh, started grinding, and I thought, well, wait a minute, let me use a little heat. It's amazing what a little heat will do. So just some advice there on that. But uh, yeah, if you got one of these, it certainly does help. All right, on to the next thing, and I'll show you what's next. All right, here's how I break these uh, bolts loose on these uh, drive shafts. They are a 12 millimeter, I believe. Let me check real quick. They are uh, 12 millimeter. And you make sure you use a 12 point socket like that if you can see that it gets a good grip because these bolts as you can see they are 12 points I believe 7 12 points but I, what I do I do I take a pipe from my wrench basically I break it loose like that and that's how I, they're all pretty good all right let me put the camera down I'll go ahead and take these off and uh I have to back this transmission and transfer case down so I can start unhooking some of the stuff and separate this. I'll be right back. And also, just make sure you uh, put a little paint there. As you can see, I got some paint on my uh, draft shaft in the back of the flange on the back of the transfer case. So you know how to put it back together. And I do not have to take the back draft shaft out. I'm just going to kind of leave it setting, resting there on that bracket. And I'll be good to go. Just make sure when you take this out that you have your transfer case sitting on something because you don't want this thing to come down and hit you and hurt you. So I'll go ahead and take these bolts out and block this up and I'll be right back and we'll move on to the next uh, procedure here in getting this thing out. Alright, I got the uh, drive shaft unhooked and here is my setup for now. I got a little jack and I got a piece of wood up under the transfer case there and there's my uh, other jack and this is down, actually, as far as it'll go. So I should be able to, you know, see my transmission is resting on that. So I should be able to get my top bolts out. I've already taken the bottom bolts out. Because they're, obviously it's easier, and they are, I believe, 15s. Put over here if I can get, grab one of them. Yeah, these are 15s, so now I just gotta get the bolts up on top of that transfer case here, and, uh, and unhook a couple, let's see, unhook a hose and a cable back here. There's a cable right there if you can see that. And that is it. Kind of hard to see with my camera if I'm doing the right thing there. No. This cable, and that's it. And this transfer case will come out. Then all I have to do is uh, get up there and break those bolts loose and take the three torque bolts out and and take the transmission out. I'll probably go ahead and like I said take, take this pan off so that it's kind of an extra step but it's just a lot easier to make sure all the oil is out of it before you take it out and tear it apart because uh, if you take it apart with, with this uh, solenoid pack and valve body still in here there's still a lot of transmission oil so I just might as well go ahead and take it out while it's up in the air where I can get all the bolts and get the oil out of it. <clears throat> It'll just be a lot easier for me so let me go ahead and uh, take this uh, transfer case off and I'll be back here then we'll start taking the rest of this off and pull this tranny out. And also, uh, by the way, uh, it did come down about four inches or so so there's plenty of room for me to get the bolts up under there. there. 
And if you're worried about the uh, motor uh, maybe turning too much, I'll go up here and I'll show you real quick that uh, I still have some pretty decent clearance. It moved back a little bit, but it didn't hurt anything. Nothing got broken. That's what you want to check. Uh, this is probably one of the saving graces of pulling the tranny out because you have to tip that tranny down a little bit to be, to be able to get those bolts up in the bell housing. So it looks like I'm okay. I dropped it down real slow. I should be okay there. Just wanted to double check that and let you know if you was worried about that by taking one of these transmissions out. And there's the back of the transfer case. Alright, all right, like I said, I'll go ahead and finish up here and we'll start taking this transmission out and I'll be back here shortly. Alright, got the last bolt out of the transfer case. It fought me to the last bolt, but I got it. Like I said, I used my uh, uh, little piece of pipe that I got. Helped me out on my uh, little ratchet. And some of those bolts, uh, the top ones, someone's already worked on this transfer case or maybe even a transmission because these bolts weren't all the way in. But before I put this thing back together, I'm going to take my power tool and, and put these bolts in and out of the transfer case a few times, ream them out so they'll turn a little bit easier in case I do have to take this transfer case out later. All right, so uh, transfer case is ready to come out. out. I'm going to pull it out here. You can watch me real quick. You set the camera over here. Let's see. I think it's the transfer case. Where is it? Uh, it's right there, I believe. Yeah, there it is. All right, so let me go ahead and rock it. Uh, get it out of there. It should come out pretty easy. Pry on a little bit of the screwdriver just to kind of help it. There you go. You gotta wipe your hands and fingers, make sure nothing gets in the way. There it is. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> Let me slide it out. I believe this one's a little bit heavier than the other one that I had. Maybe it's just some. Maybe I'm tired today, I don't know. But there's the transfer case. And uh, there's the gasket. I ain't worried about the gasket. Slightly out of the way. Like I said, the transfer case is okay. It's the transmission that gave me the problem. So, put this off to the side. And I'm going to show you. There's the transmission. There's what's left of it. And there's the back side. So, what I got to do now is start taking off some pieces. Let's see. Take off, off the torque, the bolts on the bell housing. Five bolts. And take off the three bolts on the flywheel. And get my transmission jack, which is over there. Slide up under there. And we'll slide this thing out. So let me go ahead and unhook a few wires and unhook the rest of these bolts and I'll uh, set the camera back up here when I'm sliding this thing out. Alright, well maybe you can see me here taking the, the other bolt out. Uh, I like to take my fingers up there and twist that nut until it comes out because you don't want to drop it. If you leave it in the socket you'll have a problem and I think I just about got it there. Okay, there it is. Okay, there's the other nut. That's how you take them out. I take the socket and loosen them way up and stick, stick my finger in there because you don't want to drop that in there, especially when you're putting this transmission in there. You do not want to drop one of these bolts in there because you may have a problem getting them out. All right, there it is. All right, let me uh, go ahead and set up the next stage here. All right, here comes bolt uh, nut number four off the torque converter. All right, there it is. There's all four of them. Just stick them over here. There we go. Now all I gotta do is uh, drain the oil and let's see a couple bolts on the uh, bell housing and that's it. It's basically ready to come out. By the way, this uh, gear shift, when you unhook it, the selector, there is a little clip. A lot of people break these. What you want to do, you take a, a screwdriver and you pry on the edge of this thing and the side of this will pop out a little bit. Kind of hard to do with one hand. And it releases that and you pull this straight up. And on the back side, you see those, those grooves? That's what kind of holds it in place. 
it just basically slides up and off and you can take off your uh, cable on, on your gear linkage there and I just throw everything off to the side like the wiring harness everything's back up there out of the way where I can get into the bell housing bolts let me spin the camera back around you're probably getting a little dizzy it's kind of tough to hold the camera and move around at the same time and there's my sensors on the tranny, so uh, unhook all those. You got three of them back there. And uh, this thing's ready to come out. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil of this and the jack under. And when I get ready to pull this back out, you can watch me. Alrighty. And the reason I took so long on these uh, explaining these bolts on that uh, bell housing is that's very important because a lot of people freak out when they gotta take out a transmission. And a lot of times they are hard to get off. But that's how I tuck mine off. And basically that's the only way you can get them off is through the excess through the starter hole. All right, all right let me go ahead and finish up here and we'll start taking this training out. All right guys, uh, I got the uh, pan off. I drained out the oil. And it's actually sitting over there in a bucket. Boy, there's a lot of metal in this pan. <laughs> I have to show, I'll show you a little bit all the metal that was in it. But I bolted the pan on just kind of temporary so I can put my uh, transmission jack under it. One other note, way up there on the top, and if you can see that right there, that metal plate right there, there's a couple bolts there. That is just for your lines. It's, it, it's there to hold those lines in place. I just kind of move it out of the way. It's real easy to move. Just take your hand or take a screwdriver and just push it out of the way, and you can see that it, your bolts are out of the bell housing there. Uh, once that's out of the way, the transmission will come right out. It's ready to come out. I took my a bungee cord and I kind of kind of pulled my um, transmission lines off to the side so there wouldn't be any problem. The only bolt in the transmission is over here uh, right up there I think you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and stick the jack under it and uh, go ahead and take that bolt out and drop this tranny out and I'll, you can watch me as I do it and that'll be it and this thing will be out. So uh, let me go get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay right there is my socket and my ratchet that's how you access that bolt there and uh, there was actually pretty good room to get in there and uh, get turn take that out all you gotta do is hold it with one hand and turn it with the other so I can't do this holding the camera but I wanted to show you that's how you set your socket in there through the starter hole to access those bolts and if you look closely enough there is a, a place cut out in that plate to get that your socket in there you can see kind of cut around there so there you go. All right, I'll be back here in a few minutes. We'll finish this up. We'll take this out and hopefully get this just tranny out of here pretty soon. All right, I'm back. Uh, rested a little bit. Took a break. And you know, if you're working these transmissions, that's what you got to do because when you come back, things look a lot better, feel a lot better. But I've got some of the bolts out of the transfer, out of the uh, housing. You can see back in there. I use extensions and uh, they come out pretty easy uh, before I take too many more bolts out you gotta get the uh, all important um, flywheel bolts out let me show you how I'm doing this I have to crawl back up under here there is the flywheel you access it through the starter and let's see uh, I get my light in there it's kind of tricky there's my next bolt I'm taking off I am um, accessing that bolt by on the crank I've got a 19 socket and what I'm doing I'm taking my hand and I'm turning this socket turning the crank and by laying right here I can see the, ne the next bolt coming up I have kind of have a little excess right there I can see where to stop it's kind of hard to get that light so that's how I'm taking this out. So I've got uh, three more to take out, and I'll go ahead and take these out. And uh, I'm going to drain the fluid, and this transmission is ready to come out. So uh, just so you know, that's how I'm getting these uh, torque converter bolts out. So I'll continue, so I'll be back here in a few minutes. And by the way, the bolts that you're taking off the flywheel on the torque converter are... Um, I'm using a deep well socket, and the deep well socket size is... 14 millimeter which uh, surprise I thought it would be maybe 13 but that's what I'm using it is a 14 deep well socket 
All right, let me finish this up here and take these other three bolts out. All right, I got my last bolt out. I'm going to set the camera here and maybe you can kind of watch me uh, separate this and drop that tranny out of there. So here it goes. Actually, a light. I got one bolt left. On the top. I forgot. I didn't see that. Let me take this out of here real quick. I'll just let the camera roll. No edit. Edit it out. Forgot to take one bolt out. Huh. Getting a little tired, so that makes it uh, not as fun. <laughs> Hand up there and pull it out of there. <sighs> Come on, bolt. There it is. <sighs> Come on. Let's go. Let's get out. Come on. One bolt. There we go. Okay, there it is. <sighs> yep, forgot that bolt. Didn't see it. All right. Now, now we can separate it. Should come out a lot easier. There it is. It's out. Alright, I'm going to set the jack down a little bit. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you can see it. Move the plate out of the way. And down comes the tranny. Hello, tranny. There you are. That's how you take one out. And you can see... Let me grab the camera. Let me grab the camera here. I think you can see the paint mark on the torque converter that I left there. That way I know how to put it back. But there it is, it's out. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it off the jack stand. And uh, I'll, let me go, I'll go ahead and do that and I'll give you a look behind the uh, the flex plate and stuff. We'll check it out real quick and that'll be the end of this video and uh, I'll start that tearing this transmission apart tomorrow and rebuilding it and maybe I'll make a video on that. Who knows but I just want to give you some idea what it is when it does take take one of these out. So let me take this transmission off the uh, jack stand real quick and we'll look at the back of this tranny. I mean the back of the motor real quick. Okay there's the back of the motor and uh, the flex plate is right there. It actually comes right off. You can uh, kind of see how that sets up in there like that. There's a slot there, and there's a torque converter. Uh, other than that, I had no leaks. Bone dry. Flex plate looks okay. I don't see no cracks. Just a little bit of oil or dust, dirt, whatever. But um, there's the pl uh, there's the uh, piece I was telling you about right here. Okay, you kind of got to move that up out of the way. It's just full of lines. And uh, that's about it. It's all out. The transmission's out. Let me show you where it is. Sitting right over there. Let me crawl out. out. Grab the camera. And uh, by the way, there's all my stuff. All my reverse sensor, my uh, reverse servo, and my uh, other parts, which will get cleaned up. And over here is the tranny. There it is. It's out. Pulled the pipe out. The uh, pulled the. Uh, let's see where did it go? Well, the shaft that goes in there is out. There's the side view, and there's the back side. It's out. So we'll take it apart tomorrow. Take it pump off and start tearing into it and see where the metal is. And I'll show you all the metal real quick since I'm on a video clip. Let's see, what did I do with it? There it is down here. Here's the pail. And here is all the metal. See all that metal? Big chunks of metal. Don't know 
unfortunately from him. And here's the magnet. Something self-destruct inside. Could be a planet. I don't know. Some bearings that I'll start tearing into it tomorrow. We'll find out. But that's how bad it was. And like I said, it's only got 122,000 miles on it. have no idea why the transmission decided to go so soon, but you never know. People run these things pretty hard. Hopefully this will help somebody pull one of these trans transmissions out of a 4.0 of a 2003 Ford Explorer. Like I said, this is not a job for the first time. Do it yourself or if you've worked on cars for many years, you can probably do it, but you probably want to get an extra hand to help you out. This is a pretty tough job for one person, and it took me about eight hours just to get this out over two days four hours here four hours there and like i said i will make a separate video later on that manifold which is back here on how i get these bolts out and all that and i'll make a separate video because i can't make the video too long because it'll take forever for me to upload and uh, maybe give you an update on what went bad in that tranny so and also i am going to make a video on board these servo i'm going to put new sleeves in these which all these transmissions you need to do the 5R55S, W, and N, they all have problems. I, these may be good, but I'm not taking a chance. I'm going to go ahead and put this new, bore this out and put new servo sleeves in it. And I'll make a second video even from, for that. You can watch that. All right, there's all the parts. There's where all my metal was coming from. Basically, tuck out the sun shell gear, uh, tuck out um, all this stuff you see here. And if you look closely, see these uh <laughs> this is pretty well shot so i've already ordered all this stuff online and uh on ebay there's a lot of guys that sell parts on there so i got all this stuff coming and you can see uh, let's see this i don't feel what this is called but um the bearing got chewed up on that pretty bad and if you look closely you can see places in there that's been cut and, and it's actually cracked so I'll crack in this one, but uh, even the uh, the reverse uh, planet here, it's even got places cut on it. Th this wasn't too bad, but I'm gonna replace it anyway. Actually, got this as one unit, and uh, one other thing you can see if you look closely, see all those busted gears there, teeth. That's where all my noise was coming from. So, busted pretty good there. Especially right there. And uh, even trashed one of my bearings. So luckily I'm getting all this stuff with it. But the new new part should be here in a few days. And you can see the, the wear there. It's uh, pretty bad. <laughs> but I got the transmission all cleaned up and everything. And I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. I'll walk outside. I actually brought this in the basement real quick tore it apart last night. I was kind of curious to see how bad all this stuff was. So let me, here I'll show you what the uh, trans, the, I'll show you what the case looks like real quick. And there's the transmission all tore apart. Hopefully you can see that. It's a little dark in there, but I got it tore all the way down to the reverse band. And uh, let's see, here's the reverse band. And that's actually in really good shape. Cleaned it up pretty good. Wiped all the grease off of it and I don't see much in the way of uh, damage I may go ahead and I have a, a new one in the house I may go ahead and stick it in there you can see where some of the, the metal debris has gotten in there and scratched it a little bit but I'm just probably I'll just probably replace it and let's see there's all my parts laid out as you can see there kind of laid out I think you can see and uh, the servos in pretty good shape I'm going to uh, bore out the uh, servo on the side of it. I'm going to go ahead and drill those out and put new sleeves in them. And like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on that. I just got to wait on my parts now to come in. You know, be pretty good to go. Uh, like I said, I have a separate video on how I tore one of these apart. And uh, the only problem I had last night was kind of involved if I could find my little snap ring. Uh, let's see. Find it. Now, there's a little. It's in the house, I believe. There's a little snap ring that goes down there, and that's how you take off this uh, reverse band and the, the gears back here. Uh, here it is. Let me just 
carried out in the light. Little snap ring right there. The thing's kind of hard to get off. You gotta get that snap ring off over the uh, shaft. And once you get that off, you can slide the rest of that stuff off. So, uh, I think this gear here had a, a small place in it right there. Let me take out the light. Right there, you can see that. Some chips out of there. Right there, a couple of chips out of it. So I'm replacing this too. Um, this bearing is good, but I should get my new bearings and stuff. And you got to get a little seal back here. You got to check the little seals and some stuff. So it'll probably be about two or three days before I get the stuff. So I'll actually get to rest now a little bit because I'm a little tired today, a little sore. <sighs> Everything else checks out okay. So there's, uh, like I said, what the case looks like. It's all apart. Now the uh, six cylinder has a starter on the driver's side and the V8s have it on the passenger side, but the cases are all the same. They're just uh, starters differently on each side. And the other good news is uh, the metal shavings and stuff, the filter and the transmission pan did a good job. It filtered out all the uh, particles and stuff, so I didn't really have any uh, debris or anything anywhere else, which was great. Just a little bit back in the back of the case, I got it all cleaned out and everything, and you can see the bottom of it there it's all cleaned and basically it's going to be ready to be put back together once I get all my parts in it's one thing you got to do you got to make sure you get all the debris and stuff out of it if there's any things that explode and come apart like mine did with all the little bearings and stuff you see all the little pieces I'm not sure why the plant went out in their sunshell gear all that in the back I'm not sure why it went out but uh, maybe the people were driving it really 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 hard all right, that's it. I gotta go and order a gasket, about for uh, ten dollars. Go ahead and order that, and I'm good to go. So there you go, people. There's the transmission, and we'll be putting it back together here. In a few okay, well that's it, guys. If you look at that, so uh, make sure you check out some other uh, videos on the Explorers. I'm doing a little bit at a time and adding videos as I go along, so I figure it might help somebody, and it's also a good reference for me as I get older because I get forget I'm forgetful. And it helps out to look review videos and stuff on uh, stuff I did. So that's it, guys. Good luck and be safe. Thanks for watching.